We recently remodeled a basement bathroom that had a concrete floor. There was no other heating source. So we basically decided we were gonna install an electric radiant warming system. Uh, the problem with concrete floors is that the cold concrete, it absorbs all the energy and it significantly increases the time that it takes for the tile floor system to warm up. In some cases, the floor may never reach a desired temperature on a thermostat. And this is even more of an issue when you have a situation where there's no insulation layers beneath the concrete floor, which was in our situation. Uh, this particular bathroom had no heat source and there was no way to add it from the existing system. So the electric warming system kind of made sense and it was the most logical solution to improve the space. Schluter makes an uncoupling membrane that provides a thermal break. And that's what we ended up using as a concrete uh, from our concrete substrate. The product is called Schluter Dietra Heat Duo, and it's what we used to basically create a, uh, an insulation layer. It's an uncoupling waterproofing membrane, and it has this integrated bonded fleece on the bottom of it. It can also reduce sound transmissions between floor and ceiling assemblies. The best part is that it solved my issue with heat loss through the cold concrete floor. And here's why. The Dietra Heat Duo has a, that fleece liner. It results in a 70% faster floor warming response time. Um, it's 5 16 inch thick, it's a little thicker than another other stuff that we typically use, but it has four benefits. Sound control, floor warming or insulation, decoupling and vapor management. So to install the, the Dietra Heat Duo, it can come in a roll or sheets. And they have these wire studs designed for easy installation for the heating cable. We chose to use the sheets and basically they're like, I don't know, three by five sheets. It was, it's a small room and it was also easier to cut and place around the toilet flange and floor drains. Um, when planning the system, here's a couple of tips that it's good to know. You're gonna need a dedicated ground fault circuit interrupter, a GFCI. The Dietra Heat thermostats have built-in GFI, GFCI protection. You wanna keep a minimum spacing following with your cable. Uh, you want two inches from fixed elements, such as the uh, edges of walls, partitions and cabinets. You want to use a four inch spacing away from any drains and an eight inch spacing from heating sources such as baseboard, heaters, fireplaces, air conditioning ducts. Uh, and lastly, you want to stay seven inches away from the center line of the toilet in both directions. And never install these, these heating cables underneath things like vanities, bathtubs, platforms, stuff like that, freestanding tubs, um, because they can overheat in enclosed spaces and, and it, can, it, can, um, it basically could cause overheating of the cable. So as far as installation steps, a couple of things that we particularly do, when, especially when you're dealing with concrete, is you wanna wipe down and clean the concrete. Then you wanna moisten to saturate the concrete, and this will help prevent premature drying and skinning over of the bond coat. You wanna dry fit all your parts on the floor, make sure they fit ahead of time. You can number them, you can do whatever you need to do. Make sure you use an unmodified thinset mortar and apply that thinset um, mixed to a fairly fluid consistency, but still able to hold a notch. And you wanna use a quarter by quarter square trowel notch. Um, install and embed the matting into the mortar and then use the float to you know, pack it down. And you wanna lift up the corner of that matting to make sure you have good, good coverage. 100% coverage on the back of that matting. If not, you need more. Um, you want full coverage on the webbing of that uh, and the thin set of that mortar on the back side. Let me see, uh, when you're aligning your sheets, make sure you align those studs so that they line up straight so the cable runs well. Um, you can't cross overlap or touch one another with those cables, so you have to lay your system out. And when you're running your cable from the thermostat down to the floor, you wanna use a dedicated cable run, which is uh, your electricians install for you. And this type of dedicated wire chase is good for cold lead sensor wires. Um, as far as testing the cable, it's recommended that you test a cable on the spool before you install it and twice during installation. Uh, we do it uh, before, during, and after. Um, you wanna test conductor resistance, continuity between the conductor and the ground. You wanna test insulation resistance. And then obviously the thermostat floor temperature sensors you wanna test. Speaking of floor sensors, you probably wanna install two. I like two in case one fails, you have a second backup. Um, and once you've done all these testing and, and it's installed, you're ready to go. Now, when the electric heat kicks on in this bathroom, it heats up fast and the concrete subfloor is absorbing less heat energy. And here's a pro tip. 
Because this particular bathroom was in an unheated space, we added a door closer mechanism to the door to keep the door closed at all times so it can't be left open. And this was good for heat conservation to prevent the thermostat from activating more than it needed to. I'm not gonna be able to heat the whole basement. Guys, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. I'm Rob Robillard. We'll see you next time here at Concord Carpenter.